Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And of course, we are discussing HPV and its link to cervical cancer. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, we've just heard previously from the sister explaining to us that, uh, you know, you, you can contract HPV sexually, but now there's so many different kinds of HPV that you can get. Am I right? That's right, yes. Yeah. So, there are over 100 different types. Um, but not all of them are associated with cancer or cervical okay. cancer. There are only certain types, for example, type 16 and 18 and a few other types okay. that, um, th that can develop into cervical cancer. So now cancer. a whole lot of girls around South Africa will be getting these uh, vaccinations. Mm -hmm. What happens if somebody gets vaccinated and they've already got HPV? Uh, that's okay. It can still be of benefit. Okay. Um, so it is preferable, you know, for um, the vaccine to be administered prior to any sexual contact or sexual activity. It's most beneficial then, but it can still be ben beneficial if someone's already infected with HPV. Okay. So once, I mean, how do you, how do the girls eventually find out that they have HPV, or is it only, or does it only become aware to them when they go to a doctor and realise that they've got cervical cancer? Uh, no, that is the point of cervical cancer screening. So the okay. screening can pick it up, can pick up, um, you know, HPV infection or, or precancerous cells, and you can address it then straight away in the very early stages, and that can prevent cervical cancer from developing. That's why it's so important that so women do important. go for cervical cancer. So this screening. is the only way that a girl will get cervical cancer is if she's contracted the sexually transmitted disease. Uh, yes, virus. almost all cervical cancer cases are associated with HPV, but a lot of people can have. HPV and not develop cervical cancer. You know, you, it has to be the, the cancerous types and then only in some people does it persist. Most of the time it resolves, the infection resolves, you're not even aware that you have it. Yeah. No symptoms, as the sister said. And, um, but it just in some cases it does progress and then go on to develop into cervical So the other cancer. types of HPV that you get are actually not harmful? Uh, they're associated with different things. So some of them, there's some types associated with genital warts, for example, okay. which don't aren't cancerous, but of, of course, you know, um, also not a nice yeah. thing to get. Um, and and other different um, diseases. But um, yeah, I mean, cervical cancer is obviously the one that has a significant impact in our country. I mean, yeah. it's the the cancer with the highest mortality rate in really? South African women. Yeah. How prevalent is it, and in what age groups? Like, when a woman finding this? <clears throat> um, so, well, it's probably, you know, it, it's more sort of in, um, it, it increases from sort of 30 to 60. I'd say that period is the, is the most common time when a woman would be um, diagnosed with cervical cancer. And from the time that you contract HPV, is there a, like, can it lie dormant in your body and then eventually... Yeah, it takes some time, to, you know, okay. which is why the cervical cancer screening program is so important because it, 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 it takes a while to develop but the screening can pick it up really yeah. early before it becomes serious you know and, and, yeah. yeah well tell us about some of the treatments so what happens if a girl find out finds out that she has either HPV or if she has cervical cancer what are the options available to her uh, so yeah I mean it would really depend on the stage you know so that would be something that the, uh, the woman could discuss with her healthcare provider in terms of what the options are it would depend on very much on how how far it had progressed as to what kind of treatment would be recommended but obviously the earlier you find it absolutely yeah that's the really important part um, you know there's a much higher chance of um, survival and um, you know the treatment is less invasive etc the earlier you find it so yeah. yeah I mean that's one of the problems that we have in South Africa is is you know diagnosis at such a late stage so that's why the cervical screening program is so important and it is you know with the policy that we have in place in South Africa at the moment women yeah. are entitled to free I know, screening. but how many women will just go for the screenings like I mean, if I think of 30-year-old girls, I mean, surely it's something would already be wrong for them to want to go to a doctor to then go and have a test. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's something you have to do even when you're well. You know, that's the thing about screening. It's 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 going, um, you know, and, and I think that's why a lot of people don't go. They think, well, why do I need to go? There's nothing wrong. You know, they've yeah. got no symptoms or anything like that. Yeah. But... Um, 
yeah, that is, is just something that's, that's best to do regularly because it really does save lives. Yeah, it's good to yeah. know because I honestly wouldn't even consider it. You, you wouldn't think about it in your regular life. And now this is something that a lot of girls really, really should be cognizant of. Yeah. Thank you so much. We're going to chat a little bit more after the break. And of course, we've still got some more time with our HPV experts after the break. So if you've got any questions, please head over to our social media platforms now. And don't forget to use the hashtag Afternoon Express and we'll try and answer all of them for you.